Bacillus. There are two medically important Bacillus species. Bacillus anthracis and Bacillus cereus. Assalamu alaikum everybody, hope you all are doing well. So today we'll be talking about Bacillus cereus in detail. Recently I've uploaded a video on Bacillus anthracis. If you guys missed that video, be sure to check it out. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. So have a cup of tea and let's get started. Before talking about Bacillus cereus, I want to give you a quick recap of bacterial classification. If you've missed my bacterial classification video, be sure to check it out. Bacteria are further classified based on gram staining into gram positive and gram negative. They are also classified on the basis of acid fast staining into acid fast bacteria. And there are certain other bacteria like the spirochetes and mycoplasma. Gram negative bacteria are further classified into coxa and rods. We are not concerned with gram negative today because we are talking about Bacillus cereus and it is gram positive. So let's talk about them. Gram positive bacteria are further classified into coxa and rods. Rods are further classified into non spore forming rods, which are further subdivided into filamentous and non filamentous rods. These spore forming rods are further classified into aerobic, for example, Bacillus, and anaerobic, for example, Clostridium. Aerobic and anaerobic rods are further classified into motile and non motile rods. The example of aerobic motile rod is Bacillus cereus, while that of non motile aerobic rod is Bacillus anthracis. Clostridium perfringens comes under the category of non motile anaerobic rod, while the Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, and Clostridium difficile. All of these three come under the category of motile anaerobic rods. Bacillus cereus. It is a gram-positive rod. The word cereus means wax-like. Why is it named so? Because its colonies appear to be grey or dull when cultured. It is an obligate aerobe. It is responsible for forming spores, that's why it is spore-forming bacteria. The spores are called endospores. Spores are formed in unfavourable conditions like food scarcity. Spores are hydrated, dormant and multi-shelled structures that protect the bacteria from unfavourable conditions. Bacillus cereus is motile as compared to Bacillus anthracis which is non-motile because it has got a motility apparatus with it and that is flagellum. It is heat stable. This explains why the reheated food is responsible for causing infections because bacteria in that reheated food is heat stable and it is not killed. It belongs to the Bacillaceae and Bacillales. Both are the families but specifically Bacillales because it includes Gram positive rods. As in this picture, you can see the Bacillus cereus, the gram positive rods with square ends. We're going to talk about morphology a bit later. It is a facultative anaerobe and catalase positive. It is associated with reheated food. It is responsible for causing food poisoning, which is famous with the name fried rice syndrome but it can also cause certain other diseases we're going to talk about all of them lecture outline we are done with the introduction classification and now we'll be looking at morphology habitat in transmission pathogenesis and clinical findings lab diagnosis treatment prevention and at the end as usual we'll review the lecture morphology this bacterium is rod shaped. It varies in size from 3 into 0.4 micrometers to 9 into 2 micrometers. It is arranged in chains or pairs, but sometimes it can also exist as a single bacterium. It is blue or purple colored. Why? Because it's gram positive and it has got the thick peptidoglycan layer in its cell wall and that is responsible for retaining the dye. Structure. We have talked about the thick peptidoglycan layer. This bacterium, the Bacillus cereus, is encapsulated. But let me clear a point there. It has got the normal capsule. Unlike the Bacillus anthracis, which has the polypeptide capsule made up of amino acids. That is a unique capsule, but this one has the polysaccharide capsule. It is motile, as I mentioned earlier, and it has got the flagella for motility. It is pore forming bacterium, as you can see in this picture. This is the rod, right? It is purple colored because of the gram positive and it has got square ends. And in this picture, you can see the flagella around the bacillus cereus that helps in its motility. Habitate. 
Humans are the hosts, but the sources varies from cereals or grains, for example, rice to vegetables, soil, meat, and poultry. Spores on grains such as rice survive steaming and rapid frying. The spores germinate when rice is kept warm for many hours, for example, reheated fried rice. Transmission. The portal of entry of the bacillus cereus is gastrointestinal tract. Pathogenesis. Bacillus cereus produces two enterotoxins and these are the virulence factors. The mode of action of one of the enterotoxins is the same as that of the cholera toxin. It aids adenosine diphosphate ribose, the ADP ribose to a G protein, a process called ADP ribosylation. And this stimulates adenylate cyclase and that leads to an increased concentration of cyclic AMP within the enterocyte. That's the cell of the intestine. The mode of action of the other enterotoxin resembles that of staphylococcal enterotoxin. That acts as a superantigen. The enterotoxin 1 is the cellulite that is the diarrheal toxin and it is responsible for causing nausea, vomiting. And its incubation period varies from 30 minutes to 6 hours after ingestion. And its mode of action resembles cholera toxin as I've talked. And the second enterotoxin is responsible for causing diarrhea and abdominal pain. And its incubation period varies from 6 to to 15 hours after ingestion. There are two forms of diseases. First one is emetic form and the second one is diarrheal form. The emetic form has a toxin that is heat stable but the diarrheal form has a toxin that is heat labile. In emetic form there is nausea, vomiting and cramping. Specifically vomiting because emetic is a word that is derived from emesis that means vomiting. Diarrheal form has nausea and cramping along with diarrhea because it's diarrheal form. And the toxin of the emetic form is resistant to heat and proteolysis that is the breakdown of proteins. While the diarrheal form is similar to enterotoxins of Clostridium perfringes, E. coli and Vibrio cholera, the emetic form of the disease is caused due to eating fried fried or reheated rice and the diarrheal form is caused due to eating meat and vegetables. There's intoxication in emetic form because this one is caused by toxin. This is not the true infection but the diarrheal form is true infection because it's caused by bacteria. The toxin is already present in the food. That's why it is the intoxication. It's not the actual infection. But in case of diarrheal form, the toxin is produced by bacteria after ingestion. It's not present in the food. Bacillus cereus is responsible for causing following diseases. Food poisoning, that's famous with the name fried rice syndrome, along with gastroenteritis, endophthalmitis, or panophthalmitis. Ocular infection after trauma and sepsis that is related to IV catheters and pneumonia. Clinical findings. Signs and symptoms of a disease with short incubation period may be 4 hours include nausea, vomiting, and that is similar to the food poisoning caused by staph bacteria. The disease with long incubation period varying from 15 to 18 hours presents with watery non-bloody diarrhea that is similar to clostridial gastroenteritis. Okay, let me wrap up all the clinical findings in this slide. There are two kinds of diseases caused by bacillus cereus, the GI ones and the extra GI ones. GI ones are related to gastrointestinal tract, for example, gastroenteritis, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And the ones that are outside the GI include many, but the common one is endophthalmitis, and that is due to penetrating ocular trauma. And its symptoms include proptosis, retinal hemorrhage, perivasculitis and corneal ring abscess. Lab diagnosis will need sample of feces and blood. On gram staining, it is revealed that this bacterium is gram positive because of its purple or blue color. On microscopy, this bacterium is rod shaped. It occurs in pairs or chains, but it can also occur as a single bacterium. It varies in size from 3 to 4 micrometers to 9 to 2 micrometers. This bacterium is blue or purple colored. As you can see in this picture, this bacterium is rod. It's elongated. It is encapsulated. It has got square ends. It occurs as a single bacterium, maybe forming a pair just like that one or chain like that one. And you can vis visualize the flagella there. These help this bacterium to move culture. The culture plate used for bacillus cereus is the blood agar. But 
it is beta hemolytic unlike the bacillus anthracis which is non-hemolytic beta hemolytic means complete hemolysis colonies appear to be large and feathery dull and gray that's why the serious means wax like colonies are granular they are spreading and they are opaque with a rough matted surface and irregular perimeters just like these ones treatment mostly symptomatic treatment is given to the infections caused by bacillus serious but vancomycin ciprofloxacin clinton Endomycin and gentamicin can also be used for the treatment. Prevention. Rice should not be kept warm for long hours because of the heat-stable bacteria present in the rice. And there's no vaccine that can prevent against the infections caused by Bacillus cereus. Alright guys, let's do everything in this short table. The organism we discussed today is Bacillus cereus. It is responsible for causing food poisoning, commonly known as fried rice syndrome, along with other diseases like endophthalmitis, gastroenteritis, etc. It's portal of entry is GI tract. Humans are the host. Its major sources are grains, for example rice. It can also be found in soil, meat, and veggies. Its diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, and culture. Mostly symptomatic treatment is given, but vancomycin, ciprofloxacin, clindamycin, and gentamicin can also be used. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you really did, give this video a big big thumbs up, comment down below in the comment section, and if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram and Twitter. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.